guys, and welcome to another episode of Down to Business. Um, look, again, I've got another a business owner, a new business owner here with me today, being Courtney Knight, who I think the official title is the CFO of Core Project Group. Um, a lot of you around the Newcastle area would have seen, you know, the Core Project Group signs everywhere and some pretty iconic builds. Um, you know, Courtney's role's changed over time. I'll let him explain a bit about that. But as I said, um, a very recent new shareholder, so now not just the CFO, but actually a, a business owner. Uh, I know he's a frustrated AFL present, former player that probably didn't go that bad, a father, you know, a husband, uh, you know, likes to get about town, but generally a, a good bloke that's doing some good things in business and uh, I reckon we can learn some stuff today that can help many of our viewers as well. So welcome, Court. Thanks, Andrew. And uh, I guess to start with, you know, you've been at Core Project Group for, what, five years now, thereabouts? Yeah, just over six, actually. Oh, there you go. I'm, I'm close enough. But I think on that, what a bit of background about how you, um, well, but what about your history and then how you found your way to Core Project Group? Because you're, you're not, whilst you've been around construction, you're not, you know, qualified in construction, I guess the best way to describe it. That's right. Certainly, certainly not a builder, um, Andrew. I, um, from school, uh, went to university to study commerce, um, fairly blindly, I guess, um, and was given an opportunity for, um, or with a local builder developer, um, probably not too dissimilar to, to a larger scale of, of what uh, Core Project Group has evolved into. Um, and then, you know, worked through some roles just based on opportunities while I was there um, and then ended up um, studying uh, the Masters of Property at, at Newcastle University and, and doubling back and doing a CPA. So, um, you know, coming, coming from a, um, a numbers background, I, I feel like I've got some, some good experience and, and some further studies and qualifications in, in that property space as well. So, you know, I guess some of the things that I've been able to add to our business have been more the end-to-end -end process um, that, that we're involved with as opposed to just the construction component um, and, and a commercial slant. Um, I guess the, the, the other shareholders are, are both from the building background, so um, you know, bring out, being able to bring a, a commercial angle to, to everything that we do. Mm. So I, I guess... And, and from that original start, you had a couple of jumps, I understand, between uh, coming to core, but I guess met the, well, now you're other shareholders, but, but the directors in previous roles. That's, that's probably so relationship-based. Yeah, that's right. We, we, we worked on, you know, for the same business. We didn't work, um, you know, directly with each other, but, but um, you know, we hit it off. I think, you know, we, we, we talk about culture, and I think that's something that, um, you know, particularly Jamie, Tom and myself, share um, you know the, the core to our you know daily drive is really around our families um, you know and I guess sport probably sits somewhere around there and 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 business so I think you know we've we've really we've got a pretty good perspective I guess we think on on life and um, you know and, and we enjoy coming to work because you know it, I guess it supplements our lifestyle and, and our families so um, you know I think we've got a lot in common um, although we you know the same profession and I guess didn't work directly with each other previously um, so you know we always sort of had in the back of our mind that we'd end up you know doing something together. Mm. So uh, I guess that found your way into to core as a CFO, a Chief Financial Officer, um, but talk to me about that compared to prior roles, I, I guess your role has evolved a lot more outside of the finance sphere. Yeah and I, I guess you know part of that comes around trying to build a sustainable business you know in Newcastle, particularly in our game, um, you know, you really need to be able to scale up and down. And and part of our strategy is saying, well, you know, we'll we'll not overcomplicate our systems and processes. Um, you know, we'll we'll you know really roll the sleeves up and you know even from things to emptying emptying the dishwasher, for instance. You know, you can certainly put somebody in a role to do all those sort of things um, from an admin perspective. Um, but you know we we're strong believers if we all roll our sleeves up and we all you know all do the jobs um, required to keep the business ticking over, um, you know we've we've got a sustainable business model. So yeah, you know from the outset it was a fairly broad role. Um, you know I think from day one we said the delineation was everything not not directly facing a project. Um, you know that's evolved a bit over that time, but um, you know it's a it's been a Yeah, right. And, and we'll talk about core itself because I think, uh, you know, I'll get this wrong as well, what's in its eighth year now? Or yep. 
yeah, yeah something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thereabouts. Um, but I guess core, uh, in my understanding, evolved out of you know uh, Tom and Jamie, uh, Tommy and Jamie Lind. Effectively, believing they could do things what, differently, better, better customer service. So t- talk to me about, uh, I guess, Core's background. Yeah, well, they were at the top of their tree you know, in their existing roles, and you know they had some strong views on how things could be done better, um, and you know they they had some you know ambitious plans, and and they thought the best way to, to see those through was to start out on their own. Um, you know, one of their first major clients was PKF um, back in about 2013, I think it was, and um, you know they they're very personable people and 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 really wanted to to make sure that that those qualities of, of their um, you know their day to day dealings were were seen through in the business and you know that was the core of what you know what their recruitment profile um, was set around was was making sure we had the right people um, and if, if I guess if they were had some shortcomings in some of their skills and and experience they could be you could top those things up but you certainly couldn't you, you certainly couldn't top up shortcomings in, in personality and character so um you know that that was the outset of the business and, and it's grown and evolved from there mm, okay and and i guess um you know again talking about core project and i alluded to this at the start of the uh the chat here you know you see the signs up some pretty big buildings we're just done the, the new kingsley uh hotel up at the old council building um we've got the the new council building i guess is the best way to describe it uh, the, the the iconic um, building on the corner here as you come in for the gateway project, uh, even around where we're sitting right now, um, some some pretty big big builds for what we've seen in Newcastle in, in I guess this modern day um, rising of, of of the the economy if you like. Um, so with that, it's easy to just think that that's all you do. Tell me a bit about the the breadth of the projects that you actually undertake. Yeah, well, I guess you know those few that you've mentioned are, are probably the more um, well publicised projects. Um, certainly in, in landmark positions, those those three in particular. Um, but you know, we in the early days really set out on a recession proof strategy. So the recession proof strategy really meant to try and tap into industries that, that were recession proof. So um, through the ups and downs of the you know late two thousands and even what we've seen over the last twelve or eighteen months, trying to tap into some of those industries. Um, and sectors that were a little bit shielded from that. So things around health and education are, are probably two key ones. Um, we've done we've done some work in the aged care space as well. Um, we we finished a, a large aged care facility out for Anglican Care out at um, at Brugal on the lake there, which is a pretty impressive project. Um, and and some of the stuff we've been really proud of have, have been projects like um, you know, helping um, the Westpac Rescue Helicopter relocate their um, their hunter operations down to the Belmont um, Airport. So you know, I think what what we've been able to demonstrate in our in our um, portfolio is really a, a real sort of broad breadth of projects, mm. um, to, to, you know, broad range of, of clients, be that you know private sector um, owner operators um, to to investors like the stuff in Newcastle West, um, right through to to owner operators such as Anglican Care and the Crystal Brook Collection, the, the hotel uh, down. Civic precinct. Yeah, and I guess it's uh, it's also then you've got a small works team that do a lot of smaller stuff too. Then I think with this, you know, I know you and I have discussed this before. And for for business owners, I guess who are who are watching this, um, it's great to have your big projects that probably, if anything, it you know strokes the ego a bit and and, and gives that challenge to um, not only the owners but your people to challenge themselves and grow their own resume, if you like. But at the end of the day. You've got to be very selective in projects. You've got to you've got to make sure that you can pay the bills, and you've got to make sure you're making money out of things. So you know, I think it's it's, it's a good message to get across that whilst we've got those iconic ones that get promoted, there's a lot of stuff in between that that, that you do. Yes, yeah, certainly, and I, and you know that sustainability piece in this market, um, not just in our sector, but but many other sectors, being a being a second city that, that Newcastle is, is is really important. So um, you know, we we do have a large range of, of projects that we've we've completed that are, I guess, smaller, smaller cap X mm. type projects. Um, and and it's, it's certainly something we could market a bit better, but um, you know, we've, we've done a lot of fit out work. We've done um, some small maintenance and alts and ads projects for hospitals and, and, um, and education, both at the uni and in, and in schools. Um, I think we've worked at all the major shopping centres now at, at Green Hills, Charlestown um, and Katara. 
So, you know, the mix of projects for us is really important, really, really, really important um, you know, to, 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 keep, to keep working with a range of different clients, range of different processes, range of different buildings, um, you know, making sure that we're, we're working with consultants, you know, frequently and not just on the big projects. Um, so, yeah, you know, we, we do have a, a, a pretty good size um, sort of small to medium cap team and, you know, they work feverishly in the background um, on projects that, that probably don't make, you know, don't make the, the highlight reel, I guess, particularly on um, in some of the media platforms that our bigger projects have. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess with that, it's not just the projects that have been done within Core. I mean, you, you, at the end of the day, you're a fairly young business. Um, but there's a lot of experience. I know you've, uh, and again, from an employee's point of view, you've been very targeted and selected in who you have tried to get on the team from a point of view of um, personnel uh, and skill sets. Um, you know, talk about some of the um, experience of your people that, that, that lead to some of these projects or, or um, you know, aspirational jobs, if you like. Yeah, well, you know, our, our people is, is core to our business. You know, that's, we're, we're a service provider. We're, um, you know, we're not, a, we're not rolling out houses like McDonald Jones. We haven't got a, a product as such. The, the product itself is our people. Um, and turning the, the plans and, and visions of our clients in, into reality. So, you know, I mentioned earlier that um, you know, the, the culture and character of our people is is absolutely paramount. And I think it's a cliche used pretty extensively nowadays. But um, you know, we, we we are really really firm believers that you can't teach people some of those skills um, that we think are important, but you can teach some experience and technical skills. So, um, you know, I've said a few times before that maybe some of our guys have come on and they might have been batting above the average but you know they return that in spades as far as their effort and loyalty um, you know, and, and, and the right people improve and, um, and, and pick up those skill shortcomings quite quickly so you know we, we've targeted a few people um, for particular roles in the past and we've also just used the opportunity to pick you know grab the right people when they're available um, you know whether there's a right. job for them yep. or not, and, yep. and and find jobs for them um, as well. And, and I sort of mentioned earlier as well about you know unpacking a dishwasher. I think that's that's a you know that's a that's a pretty basic example of the sort of things that you may or may not have to do in the office. But you know some of these guys that have worked that have worked on big big projects, um, be that project managers or site managers or foremen, you know, would typically work on a on a big project and and jump around from project to project. Whereas we we offer these guys permanent employment for a sustainable period of time. Um, so from time to time they'll be doing you know small shop fit outs or um, you know maintenance work from time to time to, to carry them in between those bigger projects and um, you know, once again it's you know not not everyone has the character to be able to do those sort of yeah, things. yeah I know that's a key a key message when you're recruiting um, yeah. to try and get out to people but also then to see how they respond um, so so talk to me about you know being a small business being in, in Newcastle. Um, when I say small, you know, like by relative number, these people you've attracted, which, which again, uh, to me, business is people. You know, unless you're just an online shop or you know something like that, you, you, if you're dealing with people, that that is your um, your make or break. People leaving some of the big guys in your industry to come to you, um, it can't just all be money. Uh, talk to me about about some of the um, messaging or some of the benefits you think you can provide and, and viewers could could learn from from a point of view of, uh, of, of you know attracting people to a smaller business yeah well you know sustainability of your employment is a key a key message but you know being a part of the culture being a part of the team um, you know we we have only today don't have employed lo- local people um, you know typically people that have been involved in in sport um, so I think you know, there's a fair fair few crossover characteristics with People that are successful in that environment and people that are successful in business. So um, you know, people can see the, the people that we're talking with to, to come and be a part of our business can see tangibly see what what the benefits are of, of coming you know, coming on board with our business. Um, you know, as I said, sustainability is a big one. There's some big projects around town and some big builders around town um, you know, that we believe that that we can offer them more our, our guys more sustainable employment than some of these big guys that come in and out of town. Um, but coming back to that cultural fit, um, you know, I think that's something that, that is really appealing to, to our guys and certainly something that is very appealing to me. It's, um, 
that's enjoyable coming to work. It's certainly not onerous on a Monday morning to get up and come into the office. We've got you know really great people, really good environment in the office as well, both physically and um, from a cultural perspective. So um, you know it's those less tangible things that, um, that that are really appealing to the to the guys that, that we're trying to get on board and, and have been successful in in attracting in the past. Yeah, no, that's good. No, I think um, you know you've got some people that have come on board that. You know, maybe as you said before, maybe doing smaller stuff sometimes, but they're they're also got a breadth of experience that projects is aren't necessarily delivering yet. But that provides good opportunity for the business growth as well. Yeah, that that's certainly right. And and being a young business, um, you know, we've we've had to be deliberate in in some of those appointments. Um, you know, the best example is around our aged care, um, our, our aged care team. Um, you know, we we've deliberately targeted some guys that, that we think are the best in the industry in the hunter. Um, and you know, I guess from time to time that can be difficult to to really communicate and um, and put forward in your submissions um, or in your conversations to potential clients, mm. um, where you know you, you might come up against a, a, a come up against a, a builder who has done you know ten or fifteen of this particular product before, whereas we may not have directly um, you know we may have been able to directly do a project like this, but our guys have, and our guys have got extensive experience in in some of these areas, so. Um, you know, it, it's it's a it's a process um, that, that we've been quite deliberate in, in trying to trying to um, develop a, a team like this, and um, and it's something that you know has been relatively successful to date, and, and something that we'll continue to try and leverage from. Yeah, good. So, uh, taking those people, then when you're dealing with clients, um, I know you you strongly believe that you know you've got a certain um, difference about you a point of difference in dealing with clients talk to me about that approach and and and, and you know for the layman um you know you guys are builders but but what is different about your approach with with clients and core project group yeah well i guess everyone thinks they're different but you know i think what what we what we uh, can offer our clients is the full end to end um service which i think you know other builders can probably do as well but you know we're authentic in our dealings and and that's something that um you know, that's something that you've certainly, you know, um, spoken with me quite extensively. Um, but, you know, the, the directors are very, very conscious to give give their guys and, and other people, all the guys in our team, the ability and the autonomy to, to be able to make decisions um, and be themselves. So, you know, they're, they're, they're given enough, you know, more than enough rope to, to be themselves and, and, and manage certain situations, whether they're... Um, Conflicts, I guess, or whether they're and that, that might be subcontractor based. You know, whether they're um, situations around giving approval and instruction, um, rather than have to go home and ask mum and dad for permission. Um, you know, we, we really make sure we give the guys that autonomy to, to make their own decisions and and um, and do what they think is best, and that's and that's what they're employed to do. So I think that's a real point of difference in our business, and um, and something that. Know, clients in particular, but also subcontractors and consultants can have confidence that when they're in a meeting with us or when they're going through an issue, they can get a resolution on the spot. And, um, and that's something that we, I guess we appreciate both ways as well, mm. um, but it's something that we pretty strongly offer. Again, I guess for anyone watching, it's, 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 I, I agree that is a, a, a big um, a point of difference. However, it's not just do whatever you want. There's still a framework around that uh, autonomy of giving people. Yep. Yep. Yeah, certainly. And I think... Um, you know, we, we put a lot of time and effort up, up front in, in projects. We've got a really good in-house design team, um, you know, really good estimators and planners um, in our business as well. So, you know, a lot of a lot of those issues and um, and courses of action are really resolved internally before before they occur. So, um, you know, it comes back to that 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 budget to approval a- analogy. You know, if we we get everything sorted out and resolved and planned and set. You know, right up front, then everything is just fitting within, fitting within, um, within that process. Mm. So, um, yeah, it, you know, I guess that can be a little bit hard to explain, but um, working through projects, I see it very, very frequently where where things can be resolved really quickly. Um, you know, for the for the better outcomes of the, the project. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that, and I think, um, you know, th- this is where authenticity, I think, needs to be part of business. You know, too many. Uh, People try to pull the wool over others' eyes, and I think you know I've seen where some of your projects you've missed out on because you've probably been too honest with you know things that may not have been a tender document or a scope, and, and you've pointed them out. But maybe that puts the price up. So 
you know, I think that wins out at the end of the day. But, um, yeah, I couldn't stress more for, for people when they're in business that it is about relationships and that authenticity is a key part of that. Yeah, spot on. Um, all right, so tell me about some of your, your challenges. I know I've worked with you for a few years, you know, from, from when you came into the business, as I said, going from the, the bean counter, if you like, to a bit more of a broader um, oversight. What are some of the challenges you find in business, whether it be day in, day out or month in, month out, um, and how do you navigate those? Yeah, well, I guess it's a challenging industry at the moment. It's very competitive up here. There's there's quite a lot of um, you know, Sydney builders, national, multinational builders that are in town at the moment. Um, you know, whether they're chasing the government dollars or whether they've just the, you know the, the secrets the secrets out, um, we're finding it a really competitive market. Um, and and I guess you know it, these things might. You know, these projects we're working on might look like huge, big, glamorous projects. We're playing with very, very finite margins as well. Um, so I think they're the main challenges. A super competitive market and really tight margins are things that we're, you know, we're, um, we're, we're constantly up against. Yeah, so again, you've got to come back to that job selection. That's right. Maybe when you get down to it, it's not the projects to take on. Yeah, job selection and diversity as well, making sure you're spreading that risk across a number of projects. Um, you know, cash flow risks is a big one um, for us in our industry. Um, so making sure that when we're offering security, it's structured appropriately, so that we're not exposing our exposing our cash, um, or we've we've got our cash available. Um, well, well I think a couple of points that one. It's also you know who provides the cash. It's make sure you've got the right financier as a partner uh, that understand what you're trying to achieve. That's right. You know, and that's um, in a day and age of where you know a lot of banks are trying to go through that centralised model. That can become quite hard to be sitting with a decision maker. So. I guess that's something you've uh, you've been going okay with, uh, and to me the other part around that management is making sure you've got. Uh, I would say this uh, as a tax advisor, if you like, but having that absolute right structure to cover that risk and make sure not all your eggs are in one basket. Yeah, certainly right, and and you know as you said, making sure you've got finances that are clear on what your objectives are, um, and, and you know we've worked really hard to to get the structure that that we're happy with. Um, and I guess what, one thing that I have missed that's probably the most critical of them all is, is really around safety. You know, in our game, um, you know, the directors are, are, are liable for, for any injuries or, or deaths um, that, that may happen um, on your projects. So we need to go to absolute you know, extents, extents to, to ensure that our systems and processes are, are genuinely safe and, and genuinely trying to find and resolve issues before they occur. Mm. So you know, we've, got, we've got a very extensive... Um, IMS, um, Integrated Management System, that, that we, that we u- utilise across the business. Um, and we are constantly reviewing and auditing and checking and reviewing and auditing and checking our, our systems and processes. So, um, you know, th- that is absolutely paramount for us. Or, or I, I guess um, not only could you not sleep at night, but you, you actually are putting your, your, your staff and contractors at risk for, for health and um, injury issues. Mm. And I mean... I've seen some of your uh, your internal workings, but you know it's easy to talk about this stuff and saying, yeah, they've, they've got to be things that are on our um, um, on our radar, if you like. But there's a lot of processes and documentation and checklists, not to the point of you know strangulation, but um, for consistency and, and making sure we don't have these things that creep up on us within in your business. Do you want to talk a bit about that? Yeah, well, that, that's right, and um, it, it can it can very often. Um, be, be a, a system that is used for the sake of having a system, um, and and we we're constantly coming back to the co- root cause of why we're doing this, and that is to make our sites safe, our sites safe. Um, so you know we we we're meeting frequently. Um, we, we meet as an organisation, we meet as a management team, and the directors meet as well to discuss these specific issues, um, and, and you know very frequently, particularly when all all of the team is coming together. We, we keep coming back to the fact that this is a genuine push to to ensure that we have safe work sites, um, not to you know not just to tick boxes. So um, you know the, the kiss principle, keep it simple. You know we, we really do try and keep it simple, but ensuring mm. that we you know we, we do have a thorough system. Um, and I guess you know that, that that's another component we've been really we've been really deliberate in, in ensuring that we can leverage off you know good quality systems, um, and systems that are scalable up and down. We, you know, we, we talk about our, our integrated management system, um, trying to keep it simple, trying to keep it straightforward, trying to keep it easy to use. But being able to leverage off technology has been something that makes it even easier, um, both from my perspective, sitting in the office, um, you know, finding out that somebody's cut their hand, 
it'll hit my desk within five minutes and comprehensively as well, you know, thorough, thorough reporting and updates. Um, and then straight off the back of that, there'll be incident investigations and review processes that will then filter through the meetings over the coming month mm. um, or days on site um, to, to ensure that these things aren't happening. So, you know, having a, having a rigid system that's flexible enough to not be onerous, but also being able to leverage off, off software and technology um, to ensure that it, that it is easy to use and, um, and things are being done in a timely manner. No, very good. Um, I, I think the point that I like about that is that, you know, we have got process in place. We talk about, um, you know, what differentiates a great business from a, from a, from a you know, a mediocre business. And I think a lot of that is the people, but you want people performing consistently and, and to certain standards. And for me, that's got to be, we need documented processes, not just in people's heads. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, mate, you've mentioned a lot about culture and culture at Core Project Group. Now, I'll, I'll challenge you a little bit on this because I think culture is one of the most overused uh, concepts these days and it's like someone's jumped on it and everyone talks about culture. But um, I agree with you, you've got a great culture down there, but I think culture's a result. For me, I want to talk about some of the, I guess, behaviours that go into generating that culture um, that people may be able to you know, take, some, take some insight from. Yeah, well, I, I guess being accessible is the, is the first point. Um, you know, from the moment you walk into our office, we've got an open plan office. Um, you know, you, you, for, for someone walking into our office for the first time and not knowing anyone, you wouldn't know who was, you know, who was the boss. Or, um, you know, we, we, we genuinely do have, um, you know, have a, an accessible open door policy in our business. Um, you know, and I think some some of the some of the actions and some of the um, characteristics around teamwork are, are really important. They're very hard to teach. Um, you know, that that comes in the form of you know, teaching and mentoring um, right the way through to when things do go wrong, which happens frequently in our, in our industry, um, you know, taking responsibility as a team and then working as a team to resolve them. So, um, you know, I think y- y- you spend a month in our office, you can very quickly see some of those actions um, you know, around our culture. And I do agree that the, the, the term culture is bandied around pretty extensively, but... Um, you know, when when you get when you get things right, it's important to bottle it and, and I guess try and reward it. And I'll, I'll I'll be I'll be honest in saying that there's quite a few things that, that we can continue to improve on. Um, but but we know that if we don't get our people and our culture right, not much else is important. Mm, mm. No, it's a, it's a, it's a good one. But yeah, it's 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 certain things that I think that accessibility one. You know, simple things like saying hello to people, you know, you know, saying goodbye to people. But they they're, they're Things we're taught when we're kids, but often they uh, they get lost somewhere along the way. And uh, you know, I've been in your office, and I agree with you. It's a pretty flat structure from a point of view of um, accessibility and talking to people. Um, and, and and I think, but that's what people like, you know, that uh, people go that bit extra and create that culture that we're talking about. So yeah, that's well done. Um, probably the other point I just want to cover off and was really, you know, I think people think of builders, and I say this very generally. Uh, and think, you know, you hammer a nail or you put a bit of timber, but probably don't think about the background of the business. Now, you, you guys are handling a fair bit of risk, but you've also got quite a lot of um, a governance structure in place, you know, your advisory board, that sort of thing. So talk to me about some of that aspect of walking, working um, on the business rather than just in the business and how you create time for that. Yeah, well, once again, that's that's certainly something that you can always – well, not always, but we, we think we can improve on is is the working on the business and not in the business, which is very hard to do. Um, but you know, we've we've got a really good governance process. You know, we we um, we meet quarterly as a as an advisory board team. Um, you chair those meetings, Andrew, um, and we we meet annually to go through a strategic planning process. So you know, we've been through. We're probably into our third phase of our strategic planning process at, currently. Um, which you know, which is something that, that really drove me to want to be a part of the business um, as a shareholder. You know, I think um, there's some exciting prospects on the horizon, but I'm very confident in the way that we, we do um, strategize our, our business. Um, and and I think you know when when we talk, we, a lot of these things that we've talked about don't happen by chance. They do happen deliberately, and they have been planned for, um, and reported on, and reviewed um, constantly. Now. Um, you know, I, I think you know spreadsheets and tick boxes and bits and pieces are great to have, but at the end of the day, coming up with a coming up with a strategy that you genuinely believe in and you genuinely believe can can take your business forward 
and making sure that you're checking in on those things um, uh, frequently. Mm. Now, we do have, you know, really, really strong um, advisors supporting the business, um, but, you know, we, we make sure, as, as the three directors, uh, we make sure we, we catch up weekly and try not to get too bogged down in the day-to-day issues. We do have, you know, we do have time to go through those day-to-day yeah, issues. Sure. But, but from a higher level, you know, the agenda of these meetings are, are typically around, you know, what, where's the business going, um, you know, what are the opportunities out there and what are those sort of strategic issues that, that we need to continue to work on. So, you know, it's something that, it's something that you do need to make time for um, and lock into the diaries, for instance, um, to, to make sure that, you know, you don't just get carried away with the day-to-day issues, which you can certainly do. You could probably work twice the amount of hours a week to, to work on the day-to-day issues, but... You know, if you're wandering in the, in the field with ne- without a torch in the middle of the night, you you know you don't know when you're gonna, where you're going to end up. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's a it's it's been a it's been a process and a structure that's worked quite well for us so far, and um, and I'm pretty confident it will. Do well, and and, as well. And, and you know, like the good thing is this isn't um, just best practice for you guys; it's best practice for business, and it's just not enough yep. applied. But um, but it's produced good results for you today. Yeah, no, very good. And and I guess probably finally for me, it's really um, what's the future for a core project group. Yeah, well, look, you know, we, we've got some really exciting prospects in the in the pipeline. Um, you know, we, we want to continue to work with with good clients and repeat clients, and that's that's something that we want to continue to embed over this next phase of our business um, while diversifying our income streams. So, you know, you talked about our small caps team. Um, that's something that that we'll be looking to to promote and leverage more in the next period of time, um, and you know, m- making sure that we have know, similar outlook on this business in the next three, five, nine um, years into the future and, um, you know, not sure what that business will look like over those period of time, but but if we're continually reviewing our strategy and structure, then um, I'm confident that we'll be able to take opportunities as they um, as they present. Yeah, it's a good point. I think um, what you didn't mention before was, you, you know, your um, in your governance framework, your level of reporting that happens on a at a minimum monthly for some areas, sometimes more frequent than that. But it's assessing that you know outcome, not looking backwards so much, but using the yardstick and constantly looking forward, planning where where you might need to adapt. And I think that's you know one of the things I've seen with your group is its agility. You know, so works quite well. And going from as you said, uh, you know, a um, hundred thousand dollar you know school job, just doing some uh, some capex up to well, what you're building just down the road here that's, what, $60 million. Um, you need a bit of planning and knowing where your resources are going and being able to zig rather than zag. So I think it's, um, it, it's a key point and well done. Yeah, and I think, you know, information overload is critical there. I mean, you can, you can report as long as you like. We can have, a, as I said before, you can have as many people as you like reporting. But, you know, working out exactly what the critical issues are or what the critical KPIs are and, um, and being right across those. And for us, for us, you know, cash and project risk are the two key areas, and and they're the they're the crux of, of what we're trying to keep our finger on the pulse of mm. on a regular on a regular basis. So, you know, not not overdoing it on the reporting front, but but making sure you are across the key areas in a time timely manner. Yeah, no, that's great, mate. I think um, of all the videos we do of these, we we meet very different uh, advisors or business people, whatever it may be. But there's some some key measures keep constantly coming up. I think some of yours from today that I took was. You know, really about um, stretching yourself. You know, but but having the right support around around you, whether that be internally or externally. Um, accessibility internally creates you know quite a good team vibe. Making sure you get the right people on board, whether you you're targeting them for a skill set and you think you can provide something better, or you know you're growing your own and you're giving them opportunity through mentoring, etc. Some pretty key points. But um, working on the business rather than just in it all the time. And make sure you've got good information for better decision making and uh, and planning ahead. So it's probably more in there, but I think there's some key points people can learn from. So, mate, any closing comments? No, look, appreciate the chat, Beats. Um, it's been good. Thanks, mate, for joining me. Um, you know, another great business here in the Hunter, and uh, hopefully you got something out of that. And until next time, cheers.